Good morning, Mary Ellen in Chile, Montana. It's chilly here in central Ohio as well. Um, we're, uh, last evening was like hovering right at the freezing mark. And then um, the next few days overnight, we're going to be in 30s during the day, but then overnight, um, dipping down into the 20s. So chilly. Try, time to get out the beanies and big coats and gloves and mittens and all that. Who else is here? Hi there, Vesta and Mary Lou. Good morning, Lori. Hi, Jody. Who else is here? I think I got everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. And thanks for sharing this live video as well. Um, I am here at a different time and day than usual. Um, it is Thursday, what is it? November um, 17th. Thursday, November 17th, but um, I was getting my hair done yesterday and um, where I go is about a half hour away and it had snowed, um, not terribly, but big heavy snowflakes covering the cars and things like that. Um, and the temperature was hovering right at 32. So um, I just didn't wanna be rushing home to make it at eight and zip down here. So I thought just better for everybody if I don't, um, don't take any chances and uh, reschedule it for this morning. So perhaps we'll pick up some um, people on this Thursday morning that we don't see on Wednesday evenings. A couple of um, reminders. I have a few of the Perfect Pomegranate classes to go. Perfect Pomegranate was one of the celebration stamp sets this summer. Um, so I only have enough kits for stamp sets that I have. If people don't need the stamp set, that's not a problem. But the option one with the stamp set, I have a very, very limited number, but there is still time to grab one of those. I have just a few left. Um, also, Sunday is the last day to uh, order or register for the Textured Chic Cards online class. And that will take place the first Monday in December, I think. Let me double check that. Yes, December 5th at 7 p.m. Mountain Time to 9 p.m. Mountain Time. And in that two hours, you are going to make 20 cards with me, all right? But I need people to register by this Sunday so that I have plenty of time to uh, order the supplies and put together the kits and cut uh, card bases, things like that. So don't miss out on that. Those are always a lot of fun. Um, we meet by, via Zoom and um, all the cards are super easy and fun. And you're going to love the fact that when we're finished after that two hours, you have two cards. And if something happens that you're not able to make it on the 5th, um, you have a change of plans, whatever, <clears throat> I will record the Zoom and send it af out afterwards to everybody that registers for that. And I do have a PDF tutorial only um, option. And of course, anybody who chooses option one and two will get the PDF tutorial um, as well. All right, and the last announcement, hi there, Connie. The last announcement is our seasonal sale. If you have not taken advantage of the seasonal sale, you still have today and tomorrow to do that. This, <clears throat> this applies to um, punches, dies, stamp sets, embossing folders, and some DSP in the annual catalog. So in the annual catalog, punches are 10% off. Um, stamp sets, 15% off. Dies, embossing folders, and um, non-specialty designer series paper. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm losing my voice. This started last night, but um, and I live by myself. So after leaving the hairdressers, I haven't talked to anybody. So I don't know what that's all about. 
um, but excuse me. But um, as I was saying, 20% off all dyes, embossing folders, and the non-specialty designer series paper. So the non-specialty ones are the ones that are priced like, um, like 12 by 12s that are priced at, I think they're $12. Yes. Okay. And when you order in my online store, the discounted price will pop up. Okay. And if you're a demonstrator, this is one of the great, great benefits of being on my team. If you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you get the sale price and then you get your demonstrator discount over the sale price. So huge savings, huge savings. So um, another perk for joining my team. Hi there, Shar from cold, snowy Wisconsin. Isn't it crazy? I mean, like a week ago, it was in the 70s at my house. And this week we can barely make it to the freezing mark. Anyways, I have a really fun project for you today. Um, and I can't wait to share it with you. This is a craft, holiday craft, that you can do with your entire family. People of all ages can get involved. Um, it might be a good, fun project to do together with family, friends, relatives over the Thanksgiving weekend. Um, and it's definitely one, if you want to make up a bunch, it's definitely one you can um, do while you're watching TV or a fun Hallmark movie or the big Ohio State game on Saturday. Um, but uh, I'm excited to show it with you. I'm going to flip my camera around now. And when I do that, please, share this live video and invite others to join us this morning. Okay. You're going to get a sneak peek right here. This is a great way to use up your um, scraps, the last bits of DSP in your packages. I have cut three sets of strips. These measure six inches by a half inch, six inch by a half inch. And you just want to choose any three patterns that um, coordinate together, as well as, you know, in terms of size and such. And you also need a pencil. And then you need a clear um, bauble Christmas ornament that you can get at any craft store um, this time of year. Even some of the big box stores will carry those. And then with your pencil, you're just going to wrap all these strips around and I like to keep my DSP in three separate piles. The reason for that is I need to move this computer screen up a bit. I'm missing some of the comments as they pop up. Oh, there's Joan. Hi there. I like to keep them in three separate piles and go right down the line, left to right, so that I get um, a mix of all the different colors. And for each of these piles, I cut a six by six sheet down into half inch strips. I would not suggest going any wider of a strip. You might wanna go a little bit narrower just for some variety, but I have found that the half inch strip works really, really well for this project. You know what, I'm gonna we're gonna scoot over just a bit, getting out of the screen slightly. Every time I do a Zoom meeting or something, I think I have the camera right back in place where it should be and I find I'm a little bit off.
So in essence, to actually fill this entire um, bobble, I will have put in 36 strips. Now, if you want to put less in, by all means do that. You just keep going. 36 would be the max, I would say, for the size ball I have. And I looked on the packaging. I bought two different sizes of balls. This is the larger. And um, neither one is marked with the size. So just, you know, it's like a, a fistful, a handful. Maybe the size of an orange, good size orange. But it doesn't really matter on the size. You're just going to keep filling it up with these rolled strips of paper until you feel it's plenty full. Another thing you can do to maybe add some sparkle to it is toss in a little bit of glitter and shake it up or stamp it up. We sell um, the, let me pull it out. We have the um, sequins. Maybe I'll use some of that today. I didn't use that in my sample that I'm going to show you. So I can do just like that. And you're not going to worry about those um, rolled strips coming undone or unrolling. That adds to the interest. They're naturally going to do that. So you don't want to stamp, stop them from doing it, but just roll them on your pencil. Also for the rolling, I would not suggest anything wider than a pencil, thicker than a pencil. If you get something too big, you're gonna end up with pieces like that that will open up and become quite large. Um, so I think a pencil is the perfect way to go. Of course, this is something that you can do with children. They would love getting involved with this. So they could be great teacher gifts, gifts for grandparents, um, daycare providers, anybody. They're great gifts for coworkers. You need a little secret Santa gift, something like that. Um, you could also put names on them and use them to dress up your holiday table. Do you have any other ideas of how you could use them? You're gonna be surprised when I show you some of the others I have finished and what I came up with. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Sandra. So you're, again, you just keep rolling these six inch by half inch strips until you get your ball filled. You can see it doesn't take very long. I was only going to do part of them with you, and I thought, no, we can sit here because I can um, give you some other ideas. I'm really excited to show you um, the two at the end. And again, it takes about 36 strips. So I cut three different designer series papers six by six, and then I cut it, cut the half inch strips from there. Good morning, Julie. Like I said, I try to go in order, but sometimes I get a little off, especially when I'm speaking to an audience. <laughs> Hi there, Sally. So you just keep going and going and going. And I'm going to, um, you're going to get a lesson on some triple bows that we will use to finish these off, finish off our ornament. Sometimes they need a little push. So if I had used all of these, I would have 36 in here. And I am going to put all 36 in. I just like it when it's really full. But um, for now, I'm just going to add a little bit of sparkle. 
by putting in some of our sequins. The sequins comes just like this with four colors. And it really just adds a little bit of interest to an already pretty ornament. So you can put the sequins or if you have glitter, put that in for a little sparkle if you want. Um, but it's certainly not necessary. So I'm going to do the red, the green, and the gold. And look at that, I'm making a mess. They stick right to my finger, so it's easy to pick them up from the table. So I'm going to do that. So you can see, you just shake it up. Fun. Becomes kind of an interactive ornament for the kids. They're going to love shaking it up and give it to a teacher, and they'll be saying, look, oh, don't forget, Mrs. Nave, don't forget to shake it up. All right, so now let's finish it off. I'm going to stop right here. Oh, yes, Julie, I agree. The Christmas lights on the tree. Jody, what a good idea. Okay, Jody, you're going to love what I have for you coming up then. Anyways, um, these are my two samples that I made up. They're ready to go on the tree. Um, I think I'm actually going to give these to um, my niece, Allison. She's uh, She graduated from nursing school in the spring, and she works at um, the James at Ohio State University, and she's going to school part-time to be a nurse practitioner. But she got her very first own Christmas tree and has it decorated, and as my sister sent me a picture of it, and on there were some handmade ornaments that I had made years, I mean, decades ago, like when my sister Joan was young. Um, so I thought, oh, well, this would be fun to surprise Allison with a few homemade ornaments. So I'm going to send her those. But what I want to show you is how to make this pretty bow. All right. And this is a bow. I'm calling it the triple bow. You can make it large or small. All right. So... Make sure you have plenty of ribbon. It's not going to take all that, but I like to pull it off my bolt before I start. For a large ribbon, depending on what you want, for this large one, I'm using all four fingers. For the smaller one, I used just two fingers. And this is what I do. You can even make a double bow this way. If you, When I say double bow, that means two loops on each side. A triple bow means three loops on each side. So you want to start with a few inches hanging off your hand, all right? And then you're going to just wrap the ribbon around the first two fingers, bring it up through the middle, wrap around the bottom two fingers, up through the middle, around the first two, up through the middle, around the bottom two, up through the middle, and around the last two up to the middle. And now you're just gonna cut the end. You'll know when to finish because the ends are on different sides, all right? If you have them ending on both sides, you're gonna have one side higher and one side lower in terms of numbers. So one would be four loops or three loops and one would be two. So to get the same number of loops on both sides, you wanna finish with the ends of the ribbon on opposite sides. Julie, these are glass, but I know they make plastic ones, okay? Mine are glass just because I, I like, I don't know, I just like them. Um, but I have seen them in plastic. I've seen them in different sizes, even some different shapes at times. Okay, so now I'm going to take the loop, the end that I just finished, the end that I just cut off, and I'm going to stick it down between my middle fingers. 
and give that a pull. And then I'm going to tie the two ends, just a simple knot. Simple knot, just like that. I'm not going to pull it too tight just yet, okay? Because I want to pull it off my fingers. Just slowly, gently pull it off your fingers. I'm gonna spread the loops a little bit. Like that. And I wanna make sure that where I'm tying is pretty much in the center of these loops. Sometimes when I pull it off my fingers, um, that center knot I just tied tends to be more left or right. So not tying it overly tight gives me an opportunity to move it, but that looks pretty good right in the middle. So I'm going to pull it tighter now, and then to make sure it doesn't come undone, I'm going to tie another knot and pull it real snug. So now you're just going to pull the ends, one of the ends so that they hang the same direction. You want them hanging down. So obviously the one that was kind of on the top side, I pulled down. If the ribbons curl a little bit in the making, like this one, instead of flat, I don't worry about that because it gives, um, it just gives more interest. And it also helps um, to give it dimension, the loops stand out a little bit, okay? Now this is a little bit large because I, I spread my fingers a little bit more because I wanted to show you. Um, but definitely give this a try. I'll even make a small one for you, or I'll make a second one. I don't know if it's gonna be, let's see, what do I have left? I have another large ornament that I'll be filling. And then I'm just using a glue dot and I'm going to attach the glue dot to this little um, silver metal portion of the ornament. Just like that. Pull those ends over if you feel like you need to put um, a glue dot behind like the end at the top to keep it in place, you can do that. But again, I don't worry about it. It's handmade um, and it should look handmade, right? And I'm going to trim the ends at an angle just a bit. I started wondering, would my adult children sit and make these with me? I'm not sure. I'll have to ask them. Definitely something I will make when I have grandchildren that uh, can do this with me. So there's that ornament. I'll give this to one of my girls, and then I have another bulb that I'll make one for Emily. Um, they all enjoy decorating their own tree. One thing I was going to mention, sometimes when you're using the glue dots, if they, um, you know, if the bow falls off or something, sometimes I let my house get cold. I, you know, I'm busy, I'm working, and I guess my body heats up quickly or something, I don't know, but I tend to keep my house on the cool side. Um, and I have found that if it's really cold, especially if it's hung by a window or something, um, that it'll kind of just loosen. Or I don't know if the glue dot freezes or what, but I mean, it has to be really cold and that's not very often, but it has happened. In that case, you just might want to put a dot of hot glue back there to um, secure it. So, okay, I have that. So here's these. Would you like me to go ahead and show you how to do the small ornament? 
Oh, Julie, yes. Real red and smoky slate for OSU ornaments. And I have a, a Christmas tree I put on my front porch with OSU ornaments. So, oh, ooh, maybe I'll do that for there. Good idea. And look how cool this ribbon would look on an Ohio State ornament. This would also be a nice ribbon to use for these ornaments. You can do blue and silver ornaments. You know, whatever color scheme you have for your Christmas tree, you can do. I just chose to do the um, traditional red and green. Put these away. And don't go away, because I have two more to show you that I think you're really going to like. Okay, so this one, I'm making a smaller bow, obviously. Want smaller loops, right? So you're going to, again, take a piece of ribbon, let the end hang down. And this time, it's hanging, I'm working with my first two fingers. So I want it hanging, you know, a good few inches beyond that second finger. And I'm gonna spread my fingers a little bit, wrap the ribbon around the top finger, and then around the bottom finger, and try to move these other two out of the way, up through the middle, again, around the top, up through the middle, around the bottom, up through the middle, around the top, up through the middle, around the bottom, through the middle, and now I'm ready to cut. I'm going to take the, whoops, whoops. I'm going to take the end from the top and put it through, and move this over, put it through the middle on the left side. Make sure that stays on that second finger where I want it. Pull it up and then pull the bottom end and tie a simple knot. Again, don't tie it too tight just yet. Tight enough that it holds, but you have the option to move that centerpiece around or not. I actually think the smaller ones are a little bit easier to make, but um, and I just play with these loops and things till I get them. I want to make sure they're the size I want. I want to make sure when I pull this knot, it's pretty centered between the left and right sides. And when I'm ready, I just give it a good tug. And then to make sure it stays secure, I'm gonna tie another knot and again, pull it good and snug. Then you wanna make sure to pull both ends toward the bottom. Pull both ends toward the bottom. And I'm gonna snip these at an angle. and then it's ready to fit on an ornament. Okay, so you got a lesson in making some quick, easy holiday ornaments that all your family and friends can get involved in. And um, you got a quick lesson on making triple bows. Char, I agree, I wish that silver mesh ribbon would carry over. It's carried over once. Well, I guess it went from the holiday catalog last year to this annual catalog, but I love it. I use it for so many different things. Okay, so now, dun, 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 drum roll, 
look at these. Somebody mentioned sending, um, making and giving ornaments to their grandchildren each year. Okay, I got the idea. We've been having babies born around my neighborhood here. Um, people next door have their first grandchild, a little girl, Ava, and then people around the corner just had a baby girl. Next door, they had a little boy. Um, and Andrea and John's friend, um, friends, Mike and Anna, just had a baby boy on Monday. And I thought... You know, I'd like to do a little something for them. What could I do? And Andrea had come over here. She picked up some birthday cards and a baby card. And she picked for a baby card. She picked a card that I had made with this. I'm trying to see if I have a sheet in here. I'm using scraps from here, so maybe I don't. Well, it's it's called the Happy Forest Friends. It has the little bear. You're not going to be able to see much here because I've used scraps. Do you remember that one? Because Mike and Anna really like animals, kind of playful. Um, and I believe the baby's room is like greens and yellows and a neutral. So... Um, that's the baby card she picked. So this is what I made for Calum's first ornament. Now, if you want to personalize it even further, which I think I will do for these baby ornaments, and you can do blues, you can whatever you want. This paper is from the Awash and Beauty Designer Series collection. And as I said, this is from Forest Friends. Um, so it's kind of got the green and red going here, but it's more of an olive green and poppy parade, whereas this is more garden green and real red, more traditional reds and greens. And then, of course, what's better than pink for a new baby, right? So let me show you how I would, um, how I plan to personalize this. So I think I showed you last week the latest project I had Andrea do was die cut a bunch of the stitched, stylish stitched shapes, right? Stylish stitched shapes. Oh, that's a mouthful, dies. So I have them at the ready to use. And then I had her do the same with the tailor-made tag dies. So what I thought, and so you could use a circle, whatever, but I'm going to actually use one of these dies. And this Alpha Best stamp set. This would be one that's in the new, um, in the annual catalog, so it is that 15% off. And... You could even cut these in different colors if you wanted them to um, to match the DSP or the ribbon. But I'm going to do this in white, and I'm going to stamp with Old Olive. Now, I haven't made any of these tags, so I'm hoping that... Oh, these are hard to see. I'm hoping they all turn out the way I want. <laughs> Looking for the C. Oh my goodness. It's hard when they haven't been used. Maybe I already have it over here because they're all so clean. Here's the A, I need that one. No, that's a P. I guess I should have pulled these out ahead of time, my apologies. My goodness, I can't find anything. Maybe if I look at it this way. Is that the L? Or 
is, nope, that's the I. Here's the L. Two L's, a U. Nope, that's the M. I need the C. Come on, come on. I'm so sorry. I thought, oh, I'll just pull these out and we'll be all set. And now, oh, here's C. Okay. So the new baby's name is Calum. And I'm just going to do a bunch of blocks so I don't have to be pulling them off. See? Oh, I hope I left enough space. Oh, okay, that's not good. Come on, Mary. So now I'll scoot over. C. A. It's got two L's. I haven't heard this name before, but I think it's I think it's nice. L. L. U and M. Okay. Now I'm going to do a second tag and I'm going to put the year. I don't think I've used any of the numbers yet, so that should be easy. Two. Where's my zero? It's probably staring right at me. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, here's the zero. So for whoever that was, I forgot already that said they make, um, ornaments for their grandchildren. What a nice way to, oh, don't want to lose that J. What a nice way to personalize them and put the year on. And to have a little contrast, I'm actually going to, whoops, stamp in, hold on. I'm a hot mess this morning. I'm going to stamp with the um, Puppy Parade. So I'm using colors from the designer series paper, Old Olive and Poppy Parade. Two. Zero. Two, 2022. And again, you could do any shape you wanted if you just wanted the, um, not just human. <laughs> Thank you, Melody. <laughs> Thank you. You know, that's the thing about Facebook Live. I am who I am. I keep it real. Um, and, and that's the way it should be, right? I'm in a safe, comfortable place. I don't have to worry about being judged or anything like that. So now I'm going to add these to the tag or to the ornament and I'm going to do it with some linen thread. So just cut enough thread. What I like to do for my tags is fold 
the ribbon, trim, whatever I'm using. This is our linen thread. Definitely a staple in my craft studio. And I've got both tags together here. I like to hang them together. But put the, take the loop through the front to the back, open up the loop and pull the ends through. And then, and again, I left, I used a good amount, I guess is what I'm saying. I used a good amount um, of the linen thread. I don't like to run short. That stresses me if I've got little pieces that I'm trying to uh, tie a knot in, that sort of thing. It's just easier. And I, I do understand it's a little bit of waste, but um, also for demonstration purposes, I'd like to make sure I have plenty. And there's that ornament. Now, if you want, you could even put a little glue dot or something to hold these apart. That's up to you. The other thing I could have done is stamped the year on the back or made one tag smaller than the other. I'm wondering if I might make a smaller tag there. I don't know. But either way, I think it's going to be a nice keepsake. I wonder if that name would have fit on smaller tags. Do you think so? I wonder. Maybe we should try that. Because you have all these tags. So you can um, you can use large ones and small ones. If somebody's got a real long name or if you want to put both the name and the year on the same tag, there's all different sizes that you can use. I'm just going to try it here and see what we come up with. And you know that too, just try it. If you're not 100% satisfied with something, just do, redo it with something smaller or something larger, right? It's all about our own taste and our own preferences. The nice thing about this alphabet letter too, it is kind of, um, I mean, it's a font, but it's kind of whimsical looking. So it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly in a straight line. Um, Jody, those cases I got at Hobby Lobby, um, I tried, I actually bought three different ones and brought them home to try them. And that's what I decided worked well for me. Um, you definitely want to look for ones that um, either have, oh, this is going to be a little snug, I think, either have... Um, no, not bad. I think either one looks good. Um, that have like removable um, dividers so that you can adjust it. In there, I did make, they had two long compartments and I just made a cardstock divider to put in between. Took a strip of cardstock, scored it three times and folded it up and secured it. Okay, who said that? Um, Melanie, I kind of like that idea. Maybe do just the year on the smaller tag. And again, depending on what you're stamping, um, the person's name, you could even stamp holiday words like joy, peace. I think peace would be a neat one um, if you're using like blues and silvers. Oh, you know what, Melanie? I think I think you got it right on the nose. I think this is what I'm going to do. Let's see. And I'm just getting ink all over me. Oh yeah, I kind of like that. Doing two different sizes. I think I might switch that out. Good thinking. Who was it? Melanie, I think. Yes. So, you know, mix and match, experiment, um, try different sizes, see what works for you, okay? Um, gosh, I don't know that I have anything to give away today because 
<laughs> this would be a little tricky. And I want you to try all these ornaments. I want you to make some. Use any kind of DSP that um, makes you happy, that looks good. Um, and think about giving these as gifts. These would also be nice to just set on place settings at the Christmas table, things like that. Um, but think about people you would enjoy giving these to. And um, even the people you would enjoy getting together with to um, make these together. Um, it's kind of fun because everybody can choose their papers and colors and patterns. You just start with six by six pieces and cut them all down. Um, so anyways, um, any questions about how to make these? about the bows. Oh, one thing I should mention about this alphabet stamp set, let me see. It has a punch to go with it. And why don't, I can't seem to put my finger on it at this moment, which is kind of strange. Oh, here it is. So it has a punch to go with it. So that's another way to add a little bit of dimension, okay? So maybe you could do um, a different color of tag and then stamp on white the letters um, in the same color and then just punch them and stick the punched letters on there. Lots of different options. I also like using this um, with scrapbooking. So, and keep in mind today with our seasonal sale, these are both in the annual catalog. So if you would order these, you would get 10% off the punch and 15% off the stamp set. So that's a really good deal. I don't know that we've ever had, other than maybe when things are, some things are retiring and they're on sale. Um, but um, I don't know that we've ever had all the different categories of products, so many different categories of products on sale at the same time. So... Um, it's a good one. It's a good one. Don't miss the seasonal sale. Um, Mary Ellen, <clears throat> I think the bulbs that are flat on the backside would work just as well. And like I said, I was able to, you get, I found more shapes in the plastic ornaments than I did the glass. The glass, I'm pretty much just find, uh, finding the um, balls in different uh, sizes. But in plastic, I have seen some different shapes. There were some round, narrow ones. Um, and they were, they were rounded on both sides, not flat. But um, Amy, on the sample one that I made, where is that? It's this one. I did put sequins in, okay? You could do sequins or glitter. Kids love having sequins and glitter in there. Just adds to the fun, I think. Um, but the other ones I did not. I did want to use my polish pink rib a polish pink ribbon on this, but I'm out of it and waiting for that um, for it to come in the next shipment. But I do like this um, glittered organdy ribbon on there, which would work for Christmas too. Anyways, mix and match, have fun, use up your scraps, get other people involved and just have a good time with it, okay? Um, I will see you next on, oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, 2 p.m. tomorrow. And I'm going to be showing a new to me fun fold that I learned last week um, at on stage in Indianapolis. So I think you're going to really like it. Um, Yes, Mary Ellen, that is a great idea to put on your um, holiday table at all the different places. I love that idea. Okay, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Fun Fold Friday. And um, until then, stay warm, be safe, and happy stamping.